Hey there, students. Uh, welcome back. In this uh, clip, you are going to uh, go over how to graph the perfect sine and cosine curves and also go over some examples on anal analysis of graph trig functions. So, write down the title for this lesson Graphing the Parent Sine and cosine curves, all right? So the aim here is for perfection. We want to try and do, make our gaps as perfect as possible. We want to make them look like something that was generated by a computer, okay? So we're going to start out with a sine y equals sine x. So first thing we're going to do, draw our coordinate system. Um, <clears throat> so in this one, we're going to do one part, one positive period and one negative period. So we're going to go from, uh, we're going to go negative 2 pi is less than or equal to x and then that less than or equal to 2 pi. So that's the domain we're going to be graphing it from. So that's your starting and your stopping point. So let's put x in the, the y-axis in the center and then uh, put the x-axis down the middle. Right? The way axis y and then we we'll access x. So the first question we'll ask is how do we calibrate the x-axis? Well, since we're going, since 2 pi is a complete period for the parent sine function, all we're just going to do is break it the period into 4. So if I break the period into 4, 2 pi divided by 4, I'm going to end up with pi over 2 because 2 goes into 4 2 times. So we're going to be breaking it by pi over 2's. Okay, for the parents, this only applies to the parents because the parents go by two pi's. So we're gonna go one two for the tick mark there. That's pi over two. One two for the tick mark there. That's a uh, pi. One two for the tick mark there. That's uh, three pi over two. One two for the tick mark there. That's two pi. All right, and then going back one two, negative pi over two. One two negative pi, 1, 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and 1, 2, negative 2 pi, okay? And then our amplitude, they're going to go up and down 1, because there's a 1 over here, an invisible 1, right here, it tells you how high and how low you can go. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, let's call 4 tick marks 1, okay? And then go down 1, 2, 3, 4, equivalent to negative 1. So that's the amplitude that we're going to be graphing. Alright, so now, we're going to be starting from here and ending here. So this is the max and the mean, so we can just put a dotted line here just to indicate our boundaries, so it doesn't go higher than here, and it doesn't go lower than here. Alright, all the way to 2 pi. This is our boundaries of oscillation. Sine always starts from 0, don't forget. Sine starts from 0, and cosine starts from 1. So let's graph the sine. So for sine, starting from 0, what does that mean? It means you always step in the center. If you're going to the right, you're going to go one tick mark, takes you to the maximum. One tick mark takes you to the maximum. The next tick mark takes you to the central position, back to the center. One tick mark takes you to the minimum. And one tick mark takes you back to the center position. So you go center max, center mean, center max. That pattern goes on and on forever. But here we're asked to stop at two pi, that's why I stopped here. Okay? Center max, center mean, center max. That oscillating wave pattern continues forever. Going backwards, you go the opposite direction. Center mean, back to the center, to the max, and then back to the center. So you have an ant walking up and down and up and down. That's, that's how it is. Now, whenever you're graphing, whenever you get to the max and the mean, you, make, you have curves. So max mean, you curve. Okay? You curve it. And then when you get to the center, it's straight. Okay? So you're going to go curve, straight, straight, curve. So when you're coming out of the center, out of the center, you're going to go be going straight. And when you get to, towards the max, you curve it curve it like that, and then curve out of the max, and then you go straight through the center, 
in past the center towards the mean, curve it, <clears throat> curve out of the mean straight towards the center, okay? There's always a perfectly straight line at the center. Coming out of the center, you come out straight, and then you curve it towards the max, it curves right back out of the max, and straight towards the center, straight out of the center, curves at the mean, curves out of the mean, and straight and stops at your center, okay? So that goes your perfect uh, sign curve. Yours should look better than mine because I'm doing this with an electronic device. Okay. The reason we stopped here is because that's the constraint for the lower bound. It is a constraint for the upper bound. Okay. Just some information. Um, this right here is your maximum. This is a max, and that's a max. And this here is a minimum point. And that's a minimum point. Okay. And from here to here, it's increasing. It's going up and going up here going up here and it's going down here and it's going down there decrease. All right, let's try another example. Let's look at a cosine. How about cosine? What does y equals cosine look like? Well, it looks exactly like this. Only difference is we are going to be starting from the max. We're going to be starting from the max, going center, main center max, like that. Okay? So, let's do it. Uh, this one we're going to do y equals sine x on the same domain from negative 2 pi to pi to 2 pi. Okay? So put your x-axis in the center and then we're going to put the y-axis in the center and then we're going to repeat the same pattern here, okay? So this is y, uh, y and this is x. So, let's graph this. Well, we need to calibrate. Alright, so how do we calibrate the axis? This is a parent cosine, so the same story, 2 pi divided by 4 equals pi over 2. This is a period, this is a complete period, 2 pi is a complete period for uh, cosine, so we have 4 quadrants, so that's why I break it into 4, so we can have some symmetry with our graph. Alright, so let's calibrate our x-axis, 1, 2, we're going to go by pi over 2, 1, 2, Anytime you're graphing parents, always go by pi over 2's, okay? Like that, and then x2 pi. And in the opposite direction, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. Let's use 1, 2, 3, 4 as a maximum, which is going to be 1, y, because you have a 1 right here. Okay? And then go down 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be negative 1. Alright, let's graph our points. On the right side, remember cosine starts from 1. Okay? Positive cosine starts from 1. It goes to this. Oh, before I even start putting my points, let me put down my boundaries. Okay? The upper bound is 2 pi. That means 1. And the lower bound is negative 1. So we're going to go. Uh, max, center, main, center, max. For the positive side, negative side, you're going to go max, center, min, center, max. Okay? And then connect the dots. When you're coming out the maximum, you have a cur you curve out, straight towards the center, straight out the center, curve at the minimum, curve out the minimum, straight towards the center, Straight out the center, curve at the max. And then you curve out the max, straight towards the center, straight out the center, curve at the main, curve out the main, straight towards the center, straight out the center, curve at the max. That goes your cosine graph right there. It's like a W. This is like a W. The sign is like an uh, S. This one is like a W. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is a, I feel like a cup. This one's like a cup. Two cups. And this one is like two S's. On the sides. So it's like an S and that's like an S. So sign is like an S, cosine is like a cup. Okay? So there you have it. Alright, let's try some examples of graphing these functions and specify the name. So example one, write this down. Graph each function. For the given interval, st 
update the intervals where it is increasing, decreasing, the max, the maximum, and minimum values. Okay, so there you have it. Let's try um, y equals sine x on pi over 2 is less than x is less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, so we're graphing the sine in this case. So remember, this is a parent because there's a 1 here. Okay, so we're going to graph this one from pi over 2 to 2 pi. So make your coordinate system. Since I'm going to the right, uh, you need to focus on making my right side of my x-axis longer. This is uh, y-axis. This is my x-axis. All right, now how do I calibrate? Uh, since this is the parent sign with nothing in it, uh, it's going to go by 2 pi, okay? There is... Um, Yeah, so that's what we're going to go by. So, same story as we did before. 1, we're going to go 2 pi over 4. Because we're going to break 2 pi into 4 quadrants, so it's going to be pi over 2 will be our calibration. So, we're going to go pi over 2, pi, uh, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, you can stop there. And then for the X axis, Y axis, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4 for the max, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the min. We're going one up and down because there's a 1 right here. Okay. Alright, so when we're graphing sine, remember sine starts from 0, right? Sine always starts from 0. So we're graphing sine here, so we start from 0. 0, center. And then this is our max. This is our maximum line right here. This is our maximum. You can put it if you want, but you don't have to put it. This indicates the maximum boundary. So sine is like an S. So you're going to make your S's, right? So center, maximum, center, minimum, center. So there goes your S. See your S right there? Your sine curve. But when you're connecting, you need to start from pi over 2 all the way to 2 pi. For pi over 2, you have less than which is open circle this one you have less than or equal to so which is full circle so that tells you that this endpoint at 2 pi will be closed because it's included but the endpoint at 2 at pi over 2 will be an open circle because it is not included all right so when you're connecting you're going to disconnect from pi over 2 to 2 pi so instead of going straight curve we're going to start from here and we're going to curve out straight towards the center straight out the center Curve at the bottom, curve out the bottom, straight. Ooh, let's put it again. Straight out the center, curve at the bottom, curve out the out of the main, straight towards the center. So this is exactly the old one, it's just that I didn't put this part here because the restrictions on the domain says stop start from here, start here and stop here. If it helps, you can put that there. This is your starting point, and this is where you stop. I can connect from the dots. So it says, where is it increasing? This is an ant. An ant is walking up and down this area. So where is it increasing? It's increasing from here, from here to here. It's increasing, right? And then from here to here, it's decreasing. Why? Because here my ant is walking down, 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 reaches the minimum. And now it's now walking back up. And it stops at the center. So uh, increasing. Increasing uh, from edge bracket three pi over two, comma two pi included, and is decreasing from parentheses pi over two, 
2, 3 pi over 2. The reason why I have a parenthesis here is because we have an open circle situation here. So open circle is parenthesis. Alright? So it's increasing on this interval, decreasing on that interval. Alright? Uh, this is writing it using interval notation. Or if you, you can also write it using a inequality notation, which is that 3 pi over 2 is less than x, and this is less than or equal to 2 pi. This two, these two mean the same thing. These two mean the same thing. Okay? Or for this one, decreasing, you can also write it as um, pi over 2 is less than x, and x is less than or equal to 3 pi over 2. So these two mean the same, the same thing. Okay, the top is increasing, bottom is decreasing. Alright, where are the max and the min? Uh, the minimum is right here, negative 1, there goes the min. There goes the max, but wait, it's taken out, it's an open circle, the max is gone, so you have no max. Okay, so your minimum, your minimum is uh, y equals negative 1, and your maximum is none, because it got taken away. Open circle then is just no maximum, you, get, you can get really close to this point, but you never get there, so there is no... Uh, there's no upper bound, or there's no upper limit to this, this, the continuation of this curve towards that point, okay? So you have no maximum, all right? Okay, let's try another example. Let's do y equals cosine x. In this case, you're going to go from negative 3 pi over 2 all the way to pi over 2. Alright? It's going to be exactly the same setup, but we're going to be going more to this side in this case. Alright? So let's try this out. So what we have here, uh, this is bigger to the left, so we'll move the axis to the right a little bit. Then go to the center. Calibration will be as follows. Um, this is a parent cosine function, because it's cosine alone without any addition, so 2 pi is a complete period, divided by 4 for 4 quadrants, so we're going to be going by pi over 2's, okay? Anytime you're dealing with the parent, always use pi over 2, okay? So we're going to go pi over 2 to the right, and stop, because that's the right bound, alright? This is where we're stopping at. So when do we start? We need to back up. Negative pi over 2, some more, negative pi, some more, negative 3 pi over 2, Oh, stop. Let's get enough, okay? And we go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then let's put in our boundaries, okay? This is our upper bound. And then this is our lower bound. Okay? Now, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's put in the dots. So, uh, remember, sign starts from 1. Sine starts from 1, then cosine starts from the center. I mean, I'm sorry, sine starts from 0, cosine starts from 1, right? So sine 0, cosine 1, right? So let's start from cosine, cosine starts from the top. Going to the right, the amp goes down to the center. But since this is just a less than, it's an open circle, so I might as well make it open circle, so I don't have to erase. Stop at an open. Now backing up, max, center, mean, back to the center. This is a closed circle. Okay? So just follow that pattern. Uh, so let's draw our cups. So connect the dots for the cosine. So for the cosine, we're going to curve out the max straight towards the center. Stuff right there. And then from here, you're going to curve out the max straight towards the center. Curve out the center, I mean straight out the center, curve at the main, curve out the main, straight towards the center, and there you have it. There goes your answer. This is a piece of the cosine curve that you drew earlier. Okay? If you notice, uh, it is 
increasing from here. It's go it's decreasing from here to here, right? Why? Because the ant is going away. The ant is walking down. But from here all the way to here, it's increasing. Why? Because the ant is walking up and up and up from the mean all the way to the max. And you get to the max, what does it start doing now? It starts to decrease down back to the center. Alright? So increasing and decreasing where? So it's increasing. Increasing on uh can write in two different ways. Let's use uh, interval notation first. Increasing from negative pi negative pi comma zero. Or you can write negative pi is less than or equal to x and it's less than or equal to zero. That's what increasing. Decreasing uh, is, uh, it's going to be from negative 3 pi over 2 to uh, negative pi. It's negative pi. This is supposed to be a smooth one right here. So negative pi. And then you're going to stitch it with um, zero. We're gonna go from zero. We're gonna go from zero all the way down to pi over two. It's in the bracket there. Okay. If you want to write this in interval notation, it's going to be negative three pi over two is less than x, x is less than negative pi, and 0 is less than x, and x is less than pi over 2. So it's decreasing here and increasing there. You're going to rub them so you don't get confused. This is that increasing piece, and this is where it's decreasing. Same thing written in different notations. Now you see this stitch right here? The stitch is happening because we're decreasing here. We took a big break. And then started decreasing again. Okay, decreasing and then decreasing. Max and min. Clearly, we can see that this is the highest point, the max, and this is your min. Okay, so what is your maximum value? Your maximum value is y equals 1, and your minimum is y equals negative 1. Did you say where is that? Let's see. This is where is it increasing between the maximum and values? Okay, so that's there goes your max and there goes your min. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna give you some problems to try out. You're gonna graph and then carry out this analysis for me. All right, thanks for uh, paying attention to this video.